third, maybe. Arg. Throw your deck in the graveyard because it's the Pirate Mill video. Scurvy. By the one something. Swabbly Boom Deck. Okay, guys, we're looking at this deck deck. Hope we guys see it. Starting on the deck, we're going to be having a Flint Swallower. What this card does is just fills your play library. It's awesome for it. Following that, we're going to be having uh, Sailor's and Beams. What he does is he gives you treasures and he's a decent longer. He's a 133, I believe. But you get one treasure back, so he's only really two drop. Then we have the Eye of the Skies of the Syrian Bucket Out. Cheap fly, pretty decent. Syrian uh, Serum Tamer. It's a possible negate spell if needed. It's also a one drop of fly. Can't really beat that. Storm Fleet Spy draws a card. You know, he always can draw Storm Blue, so why not? Deck, yeah. Pirates gives you more drawing support and it gives you more treasures because you're gonna get a lot of men in this deck to pull off the combo. You have 18 mans, by the way, because it runs pretty decent with 18 mans. Arg. Arg. Sensor, I prefer using Cancel, but I didn't change out in time. Sensor works great. It just negate things. It has a cycle too, maybe. A nice, lovely bounce card that gives you more land. Because, again, you're getting a lot of land in this deck. Gives you Opt treasures. Opt to uh, search your library a little bit, you know. Always get a turn one. Uh, this card gives you X treasures. And it negates a spell. Definitely a good card to have. Arg. Frame Sandy. When you combo off with the Fleet Swallower, it's automatic win. They're losing all their booty. In one turn, it's a one turn mill, if that happens. That makes you mill whenever you attack. It mills four. It's not the best mill card in the deck, but it's fun. With Frank Sandy, it's big cards, it's a lot of options. Yeah. You're gonna lose the booty over those ones. <laughs> Between those three cards, that's a big main mill strategy of this deck. Then we have daggers. It's not really, really needed, but it is fun to have the extra man open. And it flips over, you get the Black Lotus copy. Again, you don't really need the extra land, but it is useful in this. It's a scurvy curve. Another uh, Praying Blade gets to give you the extra land, because again, extra land is very important in this deck, but those two cards are hit or miss. Then for the sideboard, we have uh, Compelling Argument, which is no counter card. It just knows and counters. It's pretty decent at what it does. A Lookout Developer, which is just a really good counter card. I don't know why the second half of this video is way so in the first half, but yeah. Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce. Counter crap. <laughs> Make them pay more for things, because that's always fun. An Unsummon in case you're facing a wide creature deck like Dinosaur or something like that. Um, yeah, the deck is mono blue. The game, in, the game I said was that little black spot. Spot the mistake. It's rather competitive, and it's only like 65 bucks, I think. It wasn't that expensive to make. It runs pretty good, I play it online a lot. But this is my deck, you can find me on Odinson Folk or on Tapped Out. Definitely look me up and definitely comment on that deck. Err, maybe. So that was my pirate deck. Pirate Mill, I'm not sure if it's going to be actually played in any standard events. It does work. There's a lot of better standard mill decks out there, or standard decks out there. Mill's just always an option that's going to be kind of scary to phase against. And who knows with Ixalan what we're going to get more of. So this deck might become stupidly overpowered. It might just stay at the 50% zone and it normally stays at. But thank you guys for watching. You guys are great. Have Arr. a great one. Bye-bye.